uh, the image on the on my hands is very apt. Evening, so everything slide down. Um, okay, all right. So um, I'm going to be talking about um, uh, the uh, Linux that I've created for my uh, as a focus for observability. Um, the, the top off, uh, let's get some historical context going. Um, so back in uh, 2005. Uh, Sun uh, came out with a tool called Trace, which they included in um, Open Solaris. Um, in 2008, you may have seen on YouTube um, a shouting in the data center video uh, showing, you know, the benefits of having something like DTrace at your fingertips. Um, and um, it was really kind of first class citizen in uh, Solaris. Um, and in the Sun world, um, though it was ported to other operating systems. So Brendan uh, wrote a book on it, uh, which came out in 2011. Um, and though the primary focus was on uh, Solaris and Open Solaris, uh, it covered or tried to cover uh, some other operating systems. Um, but to kind of follow follow along in the book, uh, you really needed to be running uh, Solaris, and in some cases, specific versions of Solaris. Um, and it was a bit of a rough ride uh, for uh, for other environments. Now, um, for like in the case of Apple, they've actually ended up building up uh, on these tools. Uh, for themselves and taking it off in a different way. So, for example, um, if you're using their developer tools, uh, DTrace is in there somewhere in the background, but you you drive uh, the instrumentation of your system through uh, uh, GUI tools, um, which is not really in the spirit of the uh, of the text. Which is, you know, you basically jump on in the console and um, and run scripts. Uh, I mean, to the point that uh, Apple have actually, through their uh, mandatory act access control, have actually crippled uh, uh, the tools. So you actually have to, before you could actually use these tools on the terminal, you actually have to make an exception in your system image protection by booting your system in rescue mode, um, which which would be something that you would have to do in advance um, and sort of breaks the spirit of the tool, which is, when you when your system is hurting, you're trying to kind of di uh, dive deeper into the system. You can't, you know, uh, shut down the system, boot into recovery mode, and then go back um, to pick up from where you left off. Um, so, though it's kind of a very exciting to kind of uh, the point is like it's a very exciting tool, and uh, though. If you want to kind of learn it, you have to be running a specific environment because it's pretty lackluster in other uh, places, though it is there. Um, interestingly, Microsoft have actually also ported this to Windows now, uh, though, again, there's another uh, hindrance, which is basically uh, if you're running your uh, machine with an encrypted disk, you can't actually run this uh, tool, um, I guess, probably because it gives you full access to the system so you could effectively maybe fish out uh, your keys for disk encryption but uh, that's just a that's just my guess um, moving on um, another uh, a text uh, which was really interesting uh, was effective de debugging by uh, Diemodos uh, Spinellis uh, which kind of covers like the workflow of trying to troubleshoot and um, demonstrates how you would go about um, debugging um, a problem using GDB. Um, and the hurdle with this is that actually, when you move away from Linux, um, it becomes quite hard to, though like the book doesn't cover anything advanced, um, it does rely on your operating system support for uh, PMAP and being up to a fairly high standard because you do things like uh, trying to step back uh, in the workflow uh, of, sorry, in the flow of the running process. Um, and that's not always available. And again, it's, it, it becomes another hindrance of um, wanting to like learn a, a learn a tool, but maybe you have to be running a specific um, 
operating system, in this case Linux, uh, to get the best of it. Whereas uh, some of us don't always end up running Linux um, in all places. And then more recently, Brendan again uh, came back and released a new book, um, which was actually targeted at Linux, uh, which covers BPF trace. Uh, now, BPF trace is sort of like DTrace, but uh, created uh, from the ground up um, by the Linux community, um, uses BPF, eBPF um, as the back end. And I kind of got excited about this because it's for, for once I didn't have to run, okay, I, I had to switch from like running uh, Sun OS to um, uh, Linux, but um, it looked like it had some momentum behind it. So I kind of got interested. Um, and the nice thing about this is that uh, because it's a new tool and um, there's a lot of uh, hype around it, um, it's sort of pretty much supported out of the box on your uh, Ubuntu install uh, with some caveats. So it turns out that back in uh, the days when 32-bit um, Intel processors uh, were the uh, main product of Intel, um, because of the lack of uh, registers in the process uh, processors, it was decided that if you omit the re uh, the frame pointer uh, in your in your binaries, you would gain the use of uh, an extra uh, register at the price of basically being able to debug things. Um, and this has been carried over into uh, the 64-bit world, um, and so though you have the ability to um, debug your or instrument your um, modern Linux system, uh, when things end up uh, landing in uh, libc, um, things basically disappear because your libc has been compiled with um, no frame point, uh, pointers for as a performance optimization. Um, and so that was kind of frustrating again, because there's, there's always like something that's kind of really uh, always kind of uh, putting a spanner in the works. Uh, so I started looking around at basically what would I need to do to create my own uh, Linux distro uh, that would just work out of the box um, for uh, covering these two texts uh, initially. Um, and so I created this uh, Linux distro, um, which basically has 74 components so like common utilities um, and uh, some build utilities, um, things like make and stuff like that, that I didn't want to be part of the standard um, OS. Um, and I kind of I, uh, kept everything as kind of stock as possible. Um, so th there's no local changes uh, to any of the sources. It's literally um, take archives from upstream um, and import them in uh, without uh, patching anything. Uh, the point is usually uh, on some of the mainstream distros we're running into problems. Uh, it's hard to actually work out whether it's a local change that's been uh, introduced uh, by your uh, distribution vendor or if it's actually a bug upstream. Um, so uh, I'm not interested in uh, hacking on any of these uh, components. Uh, so every is uh, verbatim. Uh, I used uh, Linux uh, from scratch guide uh, to build this uh, with the exception of basically uh, there was a whole bunch of stuff that ended up getting pulled in that didn't need to be pulled in. So for example, uh, things like auto tools um, and stuff like that. And the reason they're, they're pulling it in in their environment is because they're patching um, the build infrastructure of various things, which requires auto tools to regenerate the infrastructure. Uh, whereas since I'm not making any changes, I don't need to carry those. Um, the other thing was, was also that I started making uh, substitutions. So instead of carrying the uh, GNU um, man tools and info tools, um, I could omit the dependencies uh, for like Perl and things like that and reduce the uh, the footprint of the base operating system. The idea being that you just have like kind of small core and then every, 
what else would be um, added in via a packaging system, in this case, a uh, package source. Um, so it's pretty much uh, safe to assume that I've all I've done is basically taken the sources of things, uh, run, uh, configure, make, make install with my C flag set, uh, not to emit the frame pointer and to preserve the debug symbols. Um, I ended up putting everything into a, a one big repo just so that it's kind of easier to uh, to track things. It's kind of like a BSDism that I've kind of uh, crept in here. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, it really isn't intended as like a, a desktop success of um, sort of the mainstream um, uh, distributions. It really is a, a lightweight um, distro. So I haven't anything like on the EFI or things like that. Uh, the screen is impressive, the integration Ubuntu. Uh, so I'm a, a laptop and you've installed it, that comes up with like a day ago. Um, I have nothing like that. It's just basically up and it's, it's pretty like actually modules or anything like that to load how quickly uh, the next boost. Um, yeah, so it's been a few months. I've been kind of distracted in uh, working on something, nothing uh, related to operating systems. Um, but my plan is to basically roll out uh, 0 0.1, which will have uh, new updates. I want to see actually what will happen with um, ad adding OpenSSL version 3 um, into the mix and how that's going to basically impact um, all the other components that rely on OpenSSL. Um, and then from there on, uh, start uh, introducing uh, the, the tools that are covered in uh, Brendan's uh, following book, which is on system performance. So including more um, tools around uh, observing system uh, performance. And um, yeah, if you're interested, uh, there isn't any mailing list or anything like that. I thought basically just have a Twitter account um, and, when, and when there are any um, updates to post the updates there. So if you're interested, follow that account. And um, that's me. Um, any questions? Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? This is Vishal here. Steven? Hi, Vishal. Yes, I can hear you. Have you also tested, uh, say, for example, running Kubernetes on top of Viewpoint Linux? Uh, I have not. Um, my focus was more on like the system side of things, so like yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah.